Namaste girls. Today we are going to discuss the next topic of chapter organisms and population that is major abiotic factors. So what are the major abiotic factors which results in the various habitats in the biome? So first that is temperature, then water, light and soil. So these are the major abiotic factors. So we will discuss these factors in detail one by one. Like the first factor that is the temperature. Temperature it also it also results in various habitats in a bio. So, like the different areas, they are having the different temperature. So, because of these temperature, different uh, temperatures, the different habitat that is present. Now, what is the reason behind this? As all of you know that the equator region, it is very hot because directly the sun rays, it will receive at this equator region or you can say that equator it receives the maximum sun rays. So that's why the temperature it always remains high. Temperature it remains high at this equator region and these that are the polar regions. Polar regions they have very less temperature. They have very less temperature or even it can go beyond zero. Means it can be less than zero degree Celsius also. So that's why these are known as the polar regions. Then here these are the tropical regions. And then here these are the temperate regions. Okay, so temperate regions they receive means they have the temperature in between of tropical and the equator region. So as we will move from the equator to the polar region then the temperature it will get decreased. Temperature it will be decreases. Okay. So either it can be the polar regions or equator region, tropical or temperate region. The organisms they survive there. Okay. So it depends upon the temperature that what kind of life form that is present there. It means that those organisms that are uh, means present in a particular habitat, they are inhabiting that area. Clear? Now we can take some examples like in the polar regions where the temperature it can be less than 0 degree Celsius or in the deep sea or hydrothermal vents or hydrothermal vents where the temperature it is more than it is more than 100 degree Celsius, there also the life it exists. Okay. Now we will take some examples related to the general knowledge that mango trees, mango trees, they are not found in Temperate countries, like Canada and Germany. Okay, now next example we will take of snow leopards. As snow leopards, they are found in polar regions. They are found in the 
polar region so that's why they are not found in kerala forest okay next we will talk about the tuna fish tuna fish it is not present in those temperature that is beyond beyond the tropical regions they are not present they are not present there now what is the effect of the temperature that why these organisms that are not present in these areas and why they are restricted to a particular area because it is the enzyme only which catalyzes the reactions and which control the metabolic reactions in the body and they remain uh, active at the optimum temperature only so if suppose the particular temperature that is not available then they will remain they will become inactive okay so that is the reason that these organisms that are restricted to the particular regions only so on this basis means on the basis of the temperature there are two kind of the organisms one that are eurythermal and one that are stenothermal eurythermal are those organisms which can tolerate which can tolerate a wide range of temperature and stenothermal are those organisms which can tolerate narrow range of temperature okay so this is all about the temperature now next we will discuss about the water that how the water it acts as a abiotic factor for considering an inhabitant or it is responsible for the different kind of habitats in a biome now next we will discuss about the water that how the water it acts as the major abiotic factor for deciding the various habitats in a biome now how water that is responsible for the various habitats and what is the importance what are the importance of the water so first is that it helps in the distribution of plants and the productivity it also depends upon the water now next is metabolic activities the metabolic reactions of our cell okay so for that also water it requires even the origin of life origin of life it also occurs through water only because as we discussed in the evolution chapter that first life form which arises so it arises in the water bodies from the water bodies only so it has an important role in the origin of life also now what are the factors in the now what is the composition of the water which is responsible for the various kinds of the habitat like salinity and the ph of the water so ph it also decides ph of the 
water it is also responsible for the various habitats of the living organisms and salinity means the salt concentration the salt concentration so if we will talk about the islands that is less than 5% salinity that is present and salinity it is measured in parts per thousand parts per thousand so that is less than 5% parts per thousand and if we will talk about sea then 32 35 now next is hyper saline hyper saline lagoons then it is more than more than 100% more than 100% parts per 1000 concentration that is present so if we will talk about hyper saline lagoons so salinity that is very high but still some organisms are there which can adapt this situation very high salt con uh, salt concentration also they are able to survive now next we will talk about the light that how light it acts as a major abiotic factor for considering the different habitats now next abiotic factor that is light that how light it is responsible for the various habitats and how the different organisms they depend upon the light for their activities so first we will discuss about the photosynthesis process photosynthesis process it is performed by the plants it is uh, performed by plants and plants they make use of the sunlight for this process and they are consumed by herbivores then carnivores it means that light the sunlight it is the ultimate source of energy ultimate source of energy and plants they are making use of the sunlight for making food by the process of the photosynthesis that's why they are known as the autotrophs or producers and the other organisms they depend upon the plants for their activities as these as this light energy it is converting into into the chemical energy and then it is transferred from one tropic level to the next level now next is the canopic trees these trees that are very tall which are present in the forest and rest that are herbs and shrubs that are present but because of these trees what happen that these herbs and shrubs that are overshadowed they are overshadowed and they get very less amount of they get very less amount of sunlight but still they adapt themselves but still they adapt themselves and they are making best use of the light whatever light they are getting they are making best possible use of that light for the process photosynthesis now next is the photophere photophere means that what amount of light that is required for the flowering of the plants now some flowers they require very uh, less duration of the light for the flowering some they require more and some they require large so short day plants short 
be plants they require light they require light less than critical day length for flowering next is long day plants they require light more than the critical day length for flowering it means that if suppose they are getting light more than the critical day length in case of short day plants then they will not flower okay and similar in the case of long day plants if suppose they are getting less light then the critical day length then also they will not flower now next that are day neuter plants day neuter plants means there is not any effect of the light if either the light that is they are getting more than the critical day length or less than the critical day length they show the flowering okay so no effect no effect of light but it does not mean that they do not require the light they require light but there is not particular limitation is there that they require the less light or they require the more light regarding if suppose we compare with the critical day length now next is in case of animals some animals that are nocturnal means they remain active at night like all some that are diurnal diurnal means they remain active at day time like human beings like mammals most of the mammals now next is that animals they require the light for the reproductive activities for the migrating activities or even for the foraging activities or even for foraging activities means for finding the food now next is that in the deep sea if suppose we will talk about the deep sea so that is at the depth of more than 500 meter so there also the light exist but how those organisms they are getting the light if the light means the uh, light of the visible radiation if it is able to penetrate the deep water so the answer is those radiations of the visible light which are having the less wavelength and acquire more energy having the more energy they are able to penetrate like blue light so blue light it is able to penetrate the deep ocean why because it is having less wavelength and more energy now next is that out of red green and blue algae which type of the algae it is present in the deep sea in the oceans so the answer that is red algae and why these algae that are how these algae that are present because they contain phyco phyco erythrin pigment phyco erythrin pigment and these pigment they are able to absorb the blue light which is having less wavelength and more energy so in this manner 
these are the algae which are present in the deepest region and they perform the photosynthesis process now next we will discuss about the soil as the abiotic factor which is responsible for the different habitats in a biome so first of all we should know that how the formation of soil it occurs so for the formation of soil weathering of rocks that are responsible okay so it depends upon the rocks that what kind of rocks that are break down and then it results in the formation of the soil and if suppose the rocks that are sedimentary then the soil that will also become sedimentary so whatever minerals that are present in the soil so it it is because of the rocks only means it depends upon the rocks only now next is that soil composition like the grain size or the aggregation grain size or the aggregation of the particles so the grain size or the aggregation of the soil particles it also decides the water holding capacity water holding capacity and the percolation rate the percolation rate of the soil water holding capacity means that how much water it will be hold by the soil particle and percolation rate means that if suppose the soil particles that are present very loosely okay then what happen easily the water it will seep down so this is about water holding capacity and percolation rate of the soil and it depends upon the grain size means the particle the soil particle size and the aggregation what kind of aggregation that is present in between that now next is that these characteristics these characteristics along with the parameters like along with the parameters like ph mineral composition and topo graphy it decides the type of vegetation means the type of plants which can be grown in that region now what is the topography here topography means to study the feature and the shape of the surface of the earth so in this manner we can easily able to determine the type of the uh, vegetation which can be grown in that particular region by studying the soil texture okay and if suppose we know about the soil that what kind of soil that is present like in case of the deep sea this sedimentary uh, type of the soil that is present so on that basis we will come to know about the benthic organisms also that what kind of the benthic organisms that are present there means they can survive there now what are benthic organisms means which can present at the deepest region means the at the deepest part of the ocean